Welcome to the Lights on Data show, live, on location. Yes. And I do have the honor to be with a star in the data world, Sirna Wang. Thank you so much for being here with us. Of course, of course. Well, I see you are the one who's dressed with stars. Um, I do have a little star on my necklace, so I think that counts. All right, okay, well, so we're, we're matching there. We're, we're finding uh, common <laughs> metadata between each other. <laughs> Well, you are the founder of Data with Serena. Yes. <laughs> you are an international speaker, LinkedIn instructor. You're providing all this guidance to worldwide organizations on the power of AI and what to watch well for. What else can you please tell us about yourself? Um, wow, I really enjoy traveling to speak. <laughs> so last year I started my own company and I thought it was going to you know, be really easy and I can take some time off, but I was so busy, I ended up going to 30 cities across three continents, wow. and this year I'm um, projected to, to beat that. We'll see, we'll see. Wow. Um, and something else that is not in my profile is I host something called Dinner and Data with Serena. When I'm on my speaking engagement tour and when I get in town, I try to meet with people in my community and then create a community for others who want to talk about data. That's so lovely. Either with me or with others. And yeah, so I hosted one here at Data couple nights ago. Yes, a couple nights ago. So it was great to see people who are are eager to learn data and they just want to connect and find that space. So I keep them intimate, like under 20 people usually. So um, definitely follow me on LinkedIn if you're interested in joining. Lovely, yeah, and definitely check out Data with Serena as well. And you, you are definitely a connector. You're a hub in, in the data world. <laughs> Try to be, and for sure. Yes, yes. <laughs> you're, you're imparting a lot of knowledge and information, such as, it, as you did in your, your talk that we just had the privilege of seeing. And you're talking about the double-edged sword of AI and what to watch out for. Can you please talk a little bit about maybe a couple of the, the risks that you, you noticed that are prevalent and maybe a couple of examples that stood out to you lately? Yeah, for sure. I think the one that stood out to me around, um, you know, Gen AI being incorrect, um, really, it doesn't get enough attention. I think, yes, we've all heard about hallucinations and Gen AI telling you the wrong things, but how severe it is and the impact that it has mm -hmm. on the business, we need to think about it a little bit further. So, for example, if you deploy the chatbot for, for your customer service and that chatbot makes a mistake, who is responsible? Well, it's still the organization. It's not the chatbot, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so who is going through that testing process and governance um, of the data that maybe go into the training before it hits, hits, um, uh, hits the AI? Like, I think we've talked about AI um, data governance is something that is very unpleasant <laughs> for a very long time or very boring or you know something that compliance cares about. But now, I think the stakes are much higher with yeah. Gen AI because it can now suddenly spit out answers that are contradictory to the policy. Um, so, so I think that that piece uh, is definitely a risk I'm watching for on great applications for business, but the accountability and governance, um, how, how do we deal with that? Definitely, and, and data governance, like you said, is becoming more in focus and more important, right. and is really serving the basis for AI governance as well. Yes, def definitely, definitely. Um, and then the other risk, of course, is um, the, the loss of jobs as a result mm -hmm. of Gen AI. And I, I think you have probably all seen the headlines on tech companies laying off people blaming Gen AI. And I think Gen AI is only part of the issue. Um, there could be other issues such as potentially hiring the wrong talent in the first place mm -hmm. um, or you know, forecasting attrition incorrectly or forecasting the demand for particular talent incorrectly years before. Again, these are data analytics problems that organizations need to think about. Um, and I think Gen AI, just like the other disruptions in the past, will impact the workforce. And a lot of uh, CEOs I talked to today are very fearful that they don't have a strategy in place, uh, whether it's hiring more people, hiring, you know, uh, whether it's talent for AI or to work with AI. Yeah. Um, and then also training employees who are currently afraid and yeah. wondering what they're going to do. So definitely it's something I think we, we have to talk about as a, as oh, a definitely. risk. I remember you asked the audience who there from the industry that you're working in, who has heard of the risk of losing their job or similar jobs 
right. because of AI and everybody raised their hand, of course. Yes. And then you <laughs> had a follow-up question that you were asking them, well, who's getting upskilled? Who's right. hearing yes. something yes. from their leadership and nobody raised their hand? Right, yes. So, uh, and, and do you think yeah. that's something that needs to be really top of mind on, on leadership and they yes. do need to put some effort into this and upskill their individuals? Right. and. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely absolutely. a lot of talent there that that can get um, uh, used and uh, not not be a loss to the organization. Yeah, for sure. And I I think a lot of CEOs are starting to look to their CHROs or chief people officers mm -hmm. in the organization to to help with this. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, and because I work with CHROs for a very long time. This is typically not a role um, that is in love with data and AI, you would think. <laughs> so, um, and some of them may not be as familiar with the technology. And, and I think it's like, this is the time. This is a fire under the chair for people who work in the HR function to start thinking about how to use Gen AI to help themselves and help the organization and then definitely. a new strategy for for talent going forward. Well said and yes definitely AI has a lot of benefits and that's one of the reasons why individuals, organizations and countries have a lot of investment in it and I don't want to you know give it all away because you did offer quite a few examples on how you can personally benefit from it in order to get a, a, a good job, how to improve yourself and your skills. So there's definitely need to watch out for, and I hope that we can re-see your presentation in a different setting as well so that many uh, more other people are able to benefit from the knowledge that you're sharing. I hope so too, thank you. Yeah, well thank you so much. Do follow Serena on LinkedIn, and yeah, keep in touch.